It's songs in the key of funny, mixing music and comedy. It's like everything you could wish for. It's like an opera singer covered in bees. It's like hearing your favorite song while you eat your favorite cheese. It's funny songs and funny stories. It's songs in the key of funny. Funny songs and the stories behind them. This is uh, Sean Fisher. Hello. He's the Gabrielle to my Zena, the Willow to my Buffy. I mean, he's the, the Uncle Joey of this show. Oh. Because he does weird things with his mouth. Yeah. And our wonderful guests this thing. week, we have uh, Kate Flannery and Scott Robinson, the Lampshades, What's are up? joining us. Oh, Very ooh. excited to have them here. Um, and we are recording this podcast live. Um, can you say recording live? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're recording we're it. We're live right uh, from Flappers Comedy Club in beautiful Burbank, California, ooh. where game shows go to have babies. Um, so as every week, we like to uh, honor the, the musical comedians working today, but we also like to tip our hats to uh, musical comedians of the past with a classic song of the week. And the song this week, I wanted to have a Halloween theme, so I picked a song called Halloween Spooks by Lambert Hendricks and Ross. And it's a uh, it's, it's spooky little song with a lot of noises. So we're going to play our little version so we don't infringe on any copyright issues. Copyright That's right, and it goes a little something like this. To sound. There we go. Had to get that in. <laughs> now, welcome Kate Flannery and Scott Robinson. Hey. The Lampshades. It's so good to have you on the show. And let's kick it off with uh, one of the Lampshades classics, uh, Take Us to Outer Space. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Just hit play. This is completely recorded. And it's, we're going to voice dub. No, we're not. <laughs> it's, we're, we're actually, I can't, I can't read this. Yeah, I actually want to dedicate this uh, song to uh, George Clooney. Sandra Bullock. Spooky. You do the math. Spooky. She packed my bag last night. Pre flight. Flight. Zero hour nine a.m. Gonna be high as a kite by then, by then, by then, by then, by then. I miss the earth so much. You miss your wife. Yeah, yeah, right. Sorry, honey. It's lonely out in space. Such a time. Let's fly. 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 This is ground control to Major Tom. You've really made the grade. And the papers want to know whose shirts you wear. Looks like they this is Major Tom to ground control. I'm stepping through the doorway. And I'm floating in the most peculiarly way. It's not the food. And it's very 
Shades are here. Space oh my God. So much. Thank you guys. We have for one other song. Should we do it now or should we do it later? Let's save it for the end. Okay. Let's, let's make them. Let's yeah. make them listen okay. to the whole episode. I don't want to. <laughs> if right. we give it all up right now, you're then, right. Yep. No, yep. that's not true. You have a following. People actually listen. We to do. You. Did you know that, Sean? Uh, this is new news to <laughs> me. We checked the numbers this week. <laughs> hey. We have a smattering. Hey. All right. We have some loyal listeners. That's that better than a smidge. It is. It's smattering is, is is I think double a smidge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a collection then... of smidges at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> One ba- smatter. Baking and audiences. A, s- a smidge is much smaller than a smatter. That's smatter-y. right. That's right. We have out. a dorkestra of fans. Ah. That's right. A dorkestra. That's right. Ooh. Nerd string. And now we're gonna have so many more because we have legit. This is what we call a legitimate guest. Oh. <laughs> and Kate wore a smart top, so this is going to be a I really did. good show. Because you never know when you you're uh, when people can see you on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. We live stream it, so we never know what to wear. And Sean right. always goes for just out of the trunk of his car. Yeah. And I'm always told to be more colorful because as wow. a gay woman, I I only know how to wear gray. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, I'm wearing blue. It's very colorful. Yeah, I saw a person wearing this on the way over here, and I just were hit they him. in did a you trunk? Get, did you hit get him fifty cents? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like I would be that stupid to pay that much. <laughs> so what? Okay, so you're 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 on the show. Um, I'm I'm a big fan. Facts. I know. I'm I'm so excited to have you. There's so Stick many things I want to ask you. I just don't know where to begin. Let's just start with how did this begin? How how did this start? Um, this lounge music comedy act. Would you describe it that way as well? Uh, yes, I would actually describe it as a dying lounge act, but that's just become dying lounge out. By lounge design. By design. Yeah. Yes. By design. We're, yeah. Yes, we're aware of the dying quality to uh, lounge, so and much. lounge music. Um, actually, uh, uh, Scott and I used to work in Chicago together in a theater company called The Annoyance Theater. We knew each other from Second City too, but at The Annoyance, uh, uh, we um, were kind of, well, there was this great club called The Green Mill that Al Capone used to hang out. It's still there. It's a jazz club. He used to own it. Jan- yeah, uh, yeah, really. Oh, yeah. It's a jazz yeah. club. Big um, comedy fan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. No guy. Before. <laughs> right. Good. Then you got a joke and then a bunch of bullets. Comedy um, in Texas. That was his thing. <laughs> <laughs> Loved him. <Yeah. laughs> <Very well. laughs> Could be fixing technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. That's a smattering. That's yeah. the smattering. And that's it. Yeah, they woke up. Yeah. I thought someone just got married and then someone tied some Opa! cans to the back of their car. <laughs> um, anyway, so we were actually in uh, uh, at the Green Mill and um, there was like a I remember there was some duo um, that they didn't. Sp- English was not their first language, and they did some lounge versions of things. I, the reason why I say I know English was not their first language because their act was called Systems Tandem, which I'm sure in a dictionary <gasps> made sense. I was like, hmm, two people together does not translate. To s- so we sort of became a little Systems Tandem ourselves, <laughs> and we. We, I don't know, I, there were so many shows at the Annoyance um, that we were involved in, and they, they literally would have like five shows a night, five completely different shows starting at 8 o'clock. Most of the shows were an hour. My God. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was really fun. And it was um, just a 
I mean, the shows were written out of improv or just completely improvised. And so we actually used to do our act 20 minutes before the 8 o'clock slot. So as people were coming into the theater, they didn't know what they were seeing. And oh. it was Jimmy Crane's show. I'm 27. I still live at home and I sell office supplies. Um, <laughs> and I just remember, and uh, Dave Adler was our live accountantist at the time. He's amazing. Um, and, uh, just an amazing musician. Um, and uh, so, uh, and people had no idea what they were seeing. That's kind of added to the, or it helped us realize the, oh, it's a dying lounge act because when we first started, like everyone would just like start wandering in, like and not not even know what they were it's looking. The best yes. way to see a lounge act. Exactly. Yeah. It was sort of like uh, off the strip at four a.m. Yeah, definitely yeah. had that vibe, right. and, and we yeah. we definitely can play those houses, and it definitely has a gravitas that we still know how to play that energy, and it's it's all fantastic. And when it's fact, it's fantastic. And when it's not. So, yeah, so that's kind of how we earned our strikes. Yeah, we were doing the real life Brady Bunch right. back then. The Miss Vagina pageant. Miss vagina. Well, you were yeah. doing the Miss yes, Vagina yes, pageant. Yes. I was not Mance invited the, to Mance do that. Mance the Musical. Show. We did Mance the Musical. Bunch of shows. Tell Let's us more about Miss Vagina pageant. Just out uh, of that curiosity. Jill Holloway, uh, who created Trans- Transparent. This was her, okay. actually her sister. Uh, came up with this idea to sort of do a mock beauty pageant and oddly enough <laughs> Lauren Michaels came to it and it felt like a pageant because uh, <laughs> four of us got considered for SNL out of it and oh, wow. two made it wow. so um, yeah so it, um, one was not me I was considered but I did not I well, it's did an not. honor just to be considered is it okay I guess it is but it's, just, but it's just weird it was weird because we were sort of up against our friends so it was kind of like the worst horrible because you, you had no space who, who for did yourself. you get passed over by um, uh, Melanie Hutzel uh, uh, who ha- was on for three seasons which yeah. is so funny but it was just weird because it's like you had to be happy for your friend otherwise you're right. really a bitch so you know or t- uh, whatever so so there was like not a lot of room to deal with your disappointment at the yeah. time you know lots of therapy since it, I mean, was a, it, it was is an, an honor to be considered for SNL it show. was an incredible bunch of like in, insanely talented women of doing like the Miss Vagina pageant but also at the annoyance too they're just like it was loaded like Beth, Beth, uh, Beth, Betty Cahill Beth Hale, who was on she, SNL she, uh, she was on SNL Susan Messing who was like the the Madonna she's, of she, comedy and, uh, and yeah of, 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 of uh, improv. She's like the female improv uh, a teacher. Like she teaches at University of Chicago, Northwestern, all over the country. And she's wow. amazing. Jill and yeah. Faith Soloway of started course. the and Becky Thayer from Mr. Show and a lot of other for things. the they were Brady all Bunch. like yeah. doing Jill, shows yeah, together. This is all started at the same time. Yeah. How has your material changed from then to now? Oh, um, uh, you mean the lampshades? Yeah. Oh, it's evolved tremendously because... Um, Where did it begin? Well, uh, before it was mostly just about the, the music, and then we figured out how to... We, we were way... Oh, uh, we didn't live in the same town for a while, and then um, I, I was in New York doing this character by myself, and I was trying to figure out like what's funny about... You know what is not said, kind of like what's implied, and because some people in show business have a way of saying something, and it, but they tell you, they reveal more than they realize if they're unconscious about what they're doing. Right. So we, when we um, decided to do the show in L.A., um, I feel like we really focused on what was funny about these two characters coming together. My uh, character has annoyingly too much energy, and his character has a- annoyingly none at all. So. <laughs> And uh, so it's like so there's that contrast of someone who's you know, and but also there's an unrequited love thing that comes up during the show, and you know it's very layered, it's deep. It's an onion of a show. It is an onion it is, of and a it show. Sometimes it stinks, but that's okay. <laughs> that's true. That's right. Sometimes it'll make you cry. The amount of drunkenness, Scott, that your character goes into during during the show, make I enjoy so much. Thank master, you. you and the Thank master. You. Does that come from any place of reality? Have you have you ever performed in that state before? Uh, 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 oddly enough, yeah, not oddly enough. Yes. <laughs> uh, when we started this in Chicago for a couple of years back in the early 90s, I used to drink real scotch. And the show was a lot longer. The show was a lot longer. <laughs> a lot, lot more longer. fun. <laughs> I and there was dad. no listening For you, whatsoever. Yeah. No <laughs> listening whatsoever. No listening whatsoever. But it was incredible playing with uh, a live accompanist like David Adler because yeah. he could make anything work. So we would kind of come up with like three or four new songs every week and try them out the next wow. show. In front of an audience sh- that didn't know they were coming to see us. <laughs> and we kind of knew stuff and didn't know stuff at that, at that point. And so we would improvise a lot. And so me drinking real liquor kind of added to the... And subtracted. <laughs> and subtracted to, from the discovery process. <laughs> right. Uh, let me put it that way. Right. So, kids, if you really want to do comedy, get wasted. Early. Super. Then get sober. Right. Then get sober. 
No, but it is an interesting. Pro- it was an interesting. <laughs> it is process an adventure for sure. going the whole gamut of wasted to sober as a performer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Learned but a lot. I, but I will tell you, from the minute we started, do, we did the show every week for five years straight at um, uh, I.O. West in L.A. Uh, and then from that point on, once a month. So we've been doing it for a long time. But it's. But I will tell you, like. <laughs> We also have accepted the weirdest gigs as part of the narrative. So, so many stories that we tell on stage actually happened um, because um, we are not a couple. We're still not a couple. Uh, <laughs> that's real. And also, um, like we literally played for 600 gay sober men at an event in Palm Springs called Hot and Dry. And we were opening for Debbie Gibson. And we didn't know what we got there. We were opening for And then we actually played NASA That Safety sounds Day. like one of the best shows I right, can imagine right. being It actually at. was. Actually, it was. And yeah, was. a and sober was. gay Debbie Gibson concert. Yeah, it was crazy. And then we, we played NASA Safety Day to, for 900 scientists who were, we had to play like for hours. We had to do like their 15 minute breaks. And they, <laughs> we had some fans from well, NASA. I'll put it in context. It was a safety day that lasted like six hours. Yes. So in, we kept in, so it. they would have these safety presentations in this giant hangar with it was a, like pl- a USO show. With a with a pl- with uh, like no a soldiers. aircraft right next to the stage right. parked there. So how some, well do yes. you know NASA safety well, now? They, they, oh. they, well, we know it pretty well, and they actually let us do the flight simulator afterwards, which is part of the thing. Wow, wow the audience so really likes that. Tell us more writing. about Space Camp, flight guys. Flight simulators. <laughs> Well, we have, um, there's a, this guy, Jim Ross, who was my boyfriend's um, former, like, assistant at NBC, became the, um, he's, like, the uh, main photographer at NASA in um, um, Lancaster, Palmdale, you know, in their Edwards Air Force When you see a picture of the space shuttle taking off and landing, he probably Those took are that fans. picture. Those all. He took Ah, uh, no, he was, it was no, seriously. Wow. And so, so, he, so he used in to bring some of his, his, his yeah. <laughs> landing, he took those two. He used to bring some of the other um, people that were like involved in his uh, the, in the photo department, but also the fl- the flyers. That had, anyway, so they became big lampshades fans. To and so question, some people were in on it, and some people weren't. W- yeah, we have plaques. We do. We got for NASA. 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 For NASA. For NASA. <laughs> for their safety, safety day. day. Just I know. To really should, I should really. Break, I gotta post that we know soon. It's been a long day. time. It's on my wall. And for those of you that don't aren't familiar with the lampshades, um, and that like I know you're wearing a smart top right now. And for just the ones listening and not watching the the live stream. Usually you perform in a uh, a red. What would you call it? A, a I call it a jumpsuit. Okay, call she jumpsuit. calls it a jumpsuit. I it's call it a forgiving. smart unitard. A smart unitard. Okay. It's a very smart unitard. All right, that and sounds he wore, very. You call it elegant. An elegantly elegant. smart unit. It's unitarded, and <laughs> <laughs> and so the idea that you got plaques from NASA and. In we the, got away with murder. That makes like me really holding happy. it, like yeah. receiving it while dressed as. In large hair, you have large hair. I do have large hair in the show. And, in the show. And Scott yeah. uh, has the biggest cumberbund you've ever seen in your it's entire life. It's a very life. large gold cumberbund. Yes. Do you have multiple colors of cumberbund? No, gosh, you yeah. do, yeah. Several. How has yeah. the costume of this evolved over the years, or has it stayed somewhat uh, No, it's actually gotten uniform. worse and weirder. It's gotten weirder. <laughs> we play Tiki Oasis sometimes in San Diego, like every other year in uh, August, which is this crazy tiki party. Again, it's part of the narrative. It feels like, of course, the lampshades would play Tiki Oasis. Like, of there's course. No, there's no difference between, we've become the thing we're making fun of. Yes. Thank God we created older characters. Otherwise, we'd be screwed. <laughs> Poor Pee Wee Herman has to CGI his face. Uh, but we don't. <laughs> Not us. Um, but I'll tell you, like, so we, ha- we actually have, I have a leopard, an all leopard uh, jumpsuit, and it, with, he has a leopard matching, somewhat matching uh, cummerbund in the same leopard material. So we've, and, but there's, you know, we have our calico look. We have, there's, you know, we have some weird. You treat know, your just, own selves like dolls. We have this look, and sometimes we dress them up we, like this. We just sort of, yes, it's sort of, yeah, it is, yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's a labor of love and ridiculousness. It is so much fun at Flappers when you guys play here and you see young comics who are on the show before or after you. That's like, oh my God, that's Kate Flannery. She's changed. Who is she? What is she wearing? <laughs> she has a camel toe. I just want to apologize to my office fans because I'm sure they're appalled and uh, mild. I don't know what they don't expect, ever apologize to okay. them. I'm, yeah. saying, I'm sorry for the camel toe, everybody. Sorry. I, I Never apologize uh, for a camel so, toe. She has so many office fans that come to see the lampshades. And I just, I get such a kick, and probably you do too, I hope you do. They have no freaking idea what they're walking what in they're to see. Because that's the reaction when they wa- they see her. It's like, that's not Kate from the office. I thought well, like you ex- were that person. Yeah, they expect <laughs> you to put a desk on stage and for you to just say right. Meredith they, they, Right, they want me to turtleneck and... Uh, do you right. respond to Meredith Bullet. if someone shouts it at you when you're walking down uh, the street? It's sometimes, if I'm stuck on a train or something and the train is stopped in the tunnel, um, maybe not because then I can't get out. Um, but yeah, so I have my moments. I sometimes put p- people out of their misery and they're like, how do I know you? Did we go to grade school together? And I'm like, oh, it depends where, you know, what situation we're in. But 
Um, so what about you, whatever. Scott? Do you respond to Meredith? <laughs> People uh, shout out to you walking down the street. I, I'm the purse holder. So I do respond to Meredith or Kate, <laughs> and then I hold their coats and purses while they take pictures. <laughs> So no, that's, I think I'm that's so a sorry. fun part of your show. Which, too, you know, is... we're not a couple, so my boyfriend's usually the one taking the picture. He's so Scott won't, <laughs> just to be clear. To be How clear. many times a day do you say we're not a couple? Just one Not in the show. Sheets. No, no, because you said me. it to me when it's you called me. No, when I, I was in the lot. car. I say a lot. Yeah. I say a lot. It's, it's a lot. lot. Two parking spaces because we're yeah. not a couple. Yeah. Well, I got to be clear about that because people are like, oh, well, you guys will come together. I'm like, no, we don't even live near each other. But I thought it was like, is she in character already? I sort of was. I was making it. was an inside joke. It's an inside joke. I think, once again, when there's a character, who's overstating something clearly they mean something yeah else. so that's you know so the fact I think that it's the way there's something under there exactly you know? we need but to look under that smart top and I think there's some love Scott. Say, what's under Kate <laughs> oh well, a red bra clearly <laughs> I, it's very clear if you come see the lampshades you'll see uh, more than you bargained for more than you ever expected and hopefully you've already eaten before you come anyway um, I mean you can eat here I'm just saying but whatever um, but the, you know um, the other thing is that we have had the joy and pleasure of clear uh, clear channel radio because um, so many, of the, like most of our arrangements are from seventies and eighties songs. We've kind of stuck in that. We have gone out of that a little bit, but like those are the ones that we mainly stick with. Because even kids today stuck on, uh, on in an elevator know these, you know, yeah. they know those songs, which is crazy. Oh yeah. Well, I see that music from that era has been outselling music of today for years. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, because it's better. It's nostalgic, too. Like, it's the kind of stuff my parents would listen to when you're in the car with them kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, right. So it's like, even if you don't listen to it, it comes on, you're like, oh, yeah, I know most of this yeah, song. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And then we actually do one song in Hebrew that is, uh, it's a Hebrew version of uh, of a Brazil 66 song. <laughs> and we know people that have been to, like, Hebrew camp, and they're like, oh, my God, we learned this in camp. <laughs> It's Yeshli, and they freak out, and that's happened so many times. It's like such a weird. So, so we do have a weird zeitgeist music-wise. I'm sure we, you know, I, I'm sure people want us to sing all the single ladies and all that stuff. But I, I mean, we've opened for like the Dan Band and, and Richard Cheese. I know they tend to do more, you know, up to date, whatever. I don't know. I'm I like saying. your uh, your uh, trapped in your match. medleys. Your medleys are yes. yeah, our mashups are they're medleys. fantastic. Well, yeah. thanks. I wasn't fishing, but I'm just I. But I was justifying. <laughs> Mandy was Brandy. Oh Mandy and man! Brandy at the same time, yeah, it's brilliant. That was yeah. a result of our keyboardist when we were rehearsing or trying to find new music. He would start playing a mel- melody, and Kate would be like, "Oh, that's that's Mandy," and I'm, and I'm like, "No, no, that's Brandy." No, wait, well, no, we what? we were Can doing Mandy do a little first. Of it? We did Mandy for a long time by itself. What was that, Barb? So we Can you do just a little bit of it? Give us a little sampling. A little Mandy Brandy. A little Mandy Brandy. Can you find that? There's been there were a lot of times where we would both be hearing different songs in the same melody though, and we'd be like, "Oh, hey, maybe they'll go together." Wow. This is a, a Barry Manilow song, everybody. No, it's a looking glass song. It's beautiful. I remember all my life. Rain and gums, compass eyes. Shadows of man, face through a window. Crying in the night. The night goes in to moaning just in the day. was called Brandy and Barry Manilow had to change it because the Looking Glass song was out right before oh, his so release. Many they literally had levels. to, yes. And I used to wait on Barry Manilow's lyricist, uh, Marty Panzer, who did not write Mandy, but he wrote uh, uh, 
even now, and it's a miracle. So I used to talk to him about it, and he, I actually invited him to the show hoping he would bring Barry, but... Where did you wait on him? Uh, at Kate Manalini Restaurant in Beverly Hills. Wow. Crazy. Small yeah. world. It is. And Barry came to the restaurant one time, and I did have a CD in my pocket that I wanted to give to him, and then I felt too stalkery. I followed him out to the garage. I'm like, this is crazy. This is <laughs> Then you felt too the, stalkery when yes, you were in the garage? Yes, when I was in the garage. I was like, this is not... Because I always had, you know, lampshades, uh, um, flyers in my pocket. But, you know, I kept my restaurant job through the first season in the office, so it wasn't unusual for people from show business that to see me there. That speaks a lot to her... Work ethic or Philadelphia work ethic. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. She just really likes food. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was getting the best. Smart line. tops. Well, they she gave really out smart tops as a uniform. Actually, we had the worst uniforms ever. These horrible white. Oh my God, everybody looked like 15 pounds heavier. I was going to yeah. ask you who would you would fanned girl, you know, because I'm sure people have fangirled you as, you know, just a character from a great TV show. But I used to love Barry the character Manilow? actor. Uh, the character actors were my all-time favorite of the show. Because I used to wait on, like, uh, uh, Howard Morris, who played Ernest T. Bass on the Andy Griffith show. He actually came to our uh, Lampshades audition yeah. for the Aspen Comedy Festival, sat in the front row, put his feet up on the stage. It was adorable. He <laughs> saw us a few times. Yeah. But, like, Did you, you ever know, embarrass yourself in front of anybody? Like, uh, Oh, constantly. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is the thing. It's like, <laughs> you're damned if you invited them and damned if you didn't. It was like, I would torture myself, like, do I? You know, I remember one time... Linda Hunt, um, I was I used to wait on her all the time, and she's like, "How are you today?" And she never used to ask me how I was. And I said, "I'm great." I said, "My comedy act just got into the uh, comedy festival in Aspen," and she's like, in her most Linda Hunt voice, "Good for you." <laughs> <laughs> and then she never asked me about myself after that. She did not want to know. It's like that was the answer that she wasn't. Yeah, she, she was not. She did not want to know my life story. She was just being polite, clearly. <laughs> That's why she was so angry. She's like, oh, this conversation's yes. continuing. Yes. <laughs> She's small but mighty. Yes. Right, then I ask, how are you? Good for you. Oh. What about you, Scott? Anybody, uh, have you ever met anybody famous and, and made a... Made Ass a, of myself? Yeah, a bit. <laughs> I'm usually, uh, no, I'm usually don't, I don't bother uh, talking to anyone. I'm, I just, I just don't, I'm like, I don't know. I just, I have nothing to say. Really, it's like I love your work, or it's like, hey, you. It's I know you. none of that. Um, no, but but we did. Uh, what's nice about doing the lampshades, though, is no matter how what a train wreck uh, the situation is, it, it fits the, our characters. Right. Like when we were there doing that no Hollywood Hills one in front of Tom Jones and oh yes, and that? Priscilla Presley. Oh, Priscilla oh my Presley god, our the sound got tank. screwed up. That was like a f- performing in front of a firing squad. It there were so many painkillers in that audience. Oh god, it's yeah. crazy. It was nuts. <laughs> We were, we were doing oh. this. We were doing the show that was oh. put together by people unnamed uh, yes. in the this producer's <laughs> Hollywood Hills house, which was, by the way, right above where it's the, on the same property, same of, property the, of the, as uh, the Manson murders. Manson murders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. yeah. They changed crazy. the number, but it's still the vibe, <laughs> anyway, the vibe nice was romantic. There. Nice place, anyway. Nice place if you're not paying attention. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you're unconscious. But the, there was uh, they set up the stage in front of this big, like, ten foot long. Shark aquarium yeah. with shark live shark swimming in it so that's not is distracting is that the metaphor for Hollywood or right? what right. not distracting go hit it and I'd love to say that this was 15 years ago but this was a year and a half yeah, right. ago <laughs> and so so there's all these people in the like Tom Jones uh, is in like six right feet there. tasteful yes. tank yes. with live sharks not that's distracting right. at all but oh Tom God. Jones and Priscilla Presley were like 8 feet in front of us oh, and, wow. and a handful I sort of, of felt other like, people have we been in a car accident and stage. this is some form of like purgatory and, like what's and, happening and the sound wouldn't work like our music wouldn't play and we kept vamping and killing time and stalling for like our entire set and then it was over no no then we d- well, we finally sang we the beginning of Mandy kind of and then the, the, the just at that point where, that we just oh, sang yeah. for you the audience started to applaud and then they took the sound they took out the and sound they couldn't figure it out again and that was so it they, so I was like wah wah so we left the there you go yeah, so that's all Tom Jones gets done oh well and then it's every, not but, unusual but then everybody thinks that that's <laughs> what we did intentionally like that was the act because it goes with your act so yeah. well so we're like, yeah, I don't oh, know if okay. everybody thought that that guy was a trick sometimes they do usually a lot of people just watching the shark swim. Like, yeah. I don't yes, know. You're like, oh, how did yeah. we get trapped in this horrible situation? But yeah, there have been some. And actually, we performed for the ribbon cutting ceremony at the extension of the LA subway. And there, were, there were like a thousand chairs set up and maybe 50 people showed up. Oh, that <laughs> feels good. Oh, it was yeah. awesome. It was like, so, and everyone was enjoying the show, but for wrong reasons. They were just, enjoy, they had bus passes around their neck. They didn't really think that we were trying to be funny or ironic. They just liked singing the songs. It was They're fantastic. great songs. They are. No, no, no. I believe me. Underneath I'm glad the that comedy. It, that it, yeah. So, yes. So we do not get embarrassed easily to answer no, your question. No, yeah, there, we are, yes. Does, yeah, although I can't look Tom Jones in the eye again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
I, I fangirled M- Michelle Trachtenberg <gasps> once. You did? Yeah. How did it go? Real bad. We were at a mutual friend's wedding, and I was a big Buffy the Vampire Slayer yeah. fan. I used to drink a lot. Um, I, I don't drink anymore, but I used to drink a lot. And so I drank all the vodka at the wedding reception and then switched to gin because they oh. ran out of vodka. Oh. Because I was trying to work up the courage to just say, I really liked you and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> but that's not what it came out. Finally, I was just like, Michelle <laughs> Trachtenberg, I read in an interview once that you auditioned for the part. And so then it went through that. And she was so kindly dismissive <laughs> when she said thank you and ah. so it was awful oh. yeah i'm sorry no it's okay it was my fault yeah <laughs> yeah i had that coming but well you win some you dim some right? those are those are good moments those, those are, are. Good. they're lear- yeah. it's a learning moment i would do it again <laughs> <laughs> given the opportunity you probably I made do her it again. Light. I guess yeah. that's a thing sometimes people ignore stars and then I they're think like she wanted vodka and i think i oh, and you finished <laughs> it yeah. i think i I was oh. like, so probably there was more to this than I, you know. To her dismissal. Yeah. It's a nice thought. Yeah. Yeah, so she just hated you for what you did, not for what you said. Probably, yeah. Yeah. That's not yeah. bad. That's better. That's back it's when I was still bad. trying to wear dresses, too. So there was so much Jesus. wrong with this story. We're getting to know you. Good times. Yeah. Kristen. You don't need to wear a dress. You're fabulous. You could wear a pantsuit. You just go. A you keep going. I love smart pantsuits. Pants. Do it. Do it. The audience agrees. Yeah, every time I hear the word pantsuit, I think that Jane Lynch pops she, into my head. She, she's a pantsuit. Right the yes, They're good pantsuits. Yes, she's got high end. I, I think pantsuit should be acceptable to all dress up occasions. I think she should sell pantsuits on HSN. I she do. should. Yeah. Yeah. Tall, tall pantsuits. Yeah. For, for the, specialty yeah. audiences yeah. and people for, that don't get out in stores. Pantsuits yeah. for the tall and funny by Jane Lynch. <laughs> right That's awesome. Which, by the way, I will plug. Uh, Jane and I have a big tour coming up uh, November and December. We're doing like a. Uh, I think like 12 shows in seven cities uh, for because we did a Christmas album last year called The Swingin' Little Christmas. It's a fantastic and album, by, by we, the way. And by we, I mean me. No, I, it's actually, it's it says Jane, it's a Jane Lynch Christmas album featuring Kate Flannery. There was some but songs that were on the charts last Christmas time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually did very well. We were number eight. The whole album was number eight in the um, uh, Billboard Top 100. And if there's any Grammy uh, voters listening, we are um, uh, in submission for Grammy. So who knows? Who it's knows? a hell of a show. An incredible live show. The album's yeah. great. The album's really fun. It's, it's actually not a live. The album's not live, though. It's fun. This um, is the kind yeah. of guest we need to solidify our show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, what yeah. the hell? Yeah, I think we're going out like the 28th, shortly after our Flappers Christmas show, which is going to be the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Just when you're sick of your family and you can't take it anymore, come uh, the Sunday after Thanksgiving and get away from them, lie to them, tell them you're, you could shop across the street, and then come see our show at 7 o'clock here Smart. at Flappers. Yeah, you there. also have one coming up uh, November, oh yeah, tw- 26th and November 7th. November 7th, yeah. yes, that'll November be a non-Christmas show. For, for those of you who hate Christmas Just and hate, hate yourselves, yeah, non denominational non- 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 How does your Christmas show differ from your, uh, well, I know how your straight Christmas show goes, but uh, what do you do in the Christmas show? Uh, we, uh, there's a few, we, yeah. Whole different bunch of props. Right, some extra costumes. <laughs> Um, we'll let do my imagination very, run wild. We do a very sexy version of uh, Little Drummer Boy. That's all yeah, I'm going to say. And it's, you have to see it to believe it. Cause well, I'll be there. It's, it's, huh? it's, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is, baby. And then exactly. a, a, a song that's um, it's going it, it pays homage to a formerly X-rated movie from the late 60s. Yes, that's right. That's right. We do White Christmas with the theme to Midnight Cowboy. Wow. That's our mashup here, Christmas mashup. Well, you don't want to miss that. That's November 26th here at Flappers. 7 o'clock. And, uh, oh, if you're just joining us, this is Songs in the Key of Funny. I'm Kristen Key. With me is uh, Sean Fisher and our guest this week, Kate Flannery and Scott Robinson from The Lampshades. Yeah. Oh, truth. So, um, I noticed earlier, before we get to your, you got, you reached something into the instrument box and grabbed an instrument on one of our songs today. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're going to... Everybody, yeah. reach into that instrument box and grab your favorite instrument because we do a segment on the show called Musical Mashup. All right. Does everybody have their instrument? Works for me. All right, Sean. All we'll right. start with you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to play this with one hand. Why'd you grab that instrument, Sean? Why'd you grab that instrument? Can you play that instrument? Can you play it now? Well, I do think so, it doesn't make me feel real glum I just hit it with my fingers and I smack it with my thumb And I know that I might be up here and I am looking dumb But I love to play these bongos and I make mouth sounds like drums Uh. (laughs) Nice work, Sean! Thanks! 
Why'd you choose your instrument? Scott, why'd you choose that instrument? Can you play that instrument? Can you play it now? Well, I sure can play this. It's just a little rubbin. Not quite sure what this instrument's called, but I'm gonna call it something. <laughs> nice work. Why'd you choose that instrument, Kate? Why'd you choose that instrument? Can you play that instrument, Kate? Can you play it now? Good job, everybody! Yeah, it was fun! That was a silent everybody. If you're not watching the live stream, that was a xylophone. Musical mashup went really well this week. Who knows how to play a xylophone? Just picking it up. Kate? Showbiz! Kate Flannery with I, the smart top. Hey, uh, if you've had as many commercial auditions and not booked as many commercials, <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> How often xylophone yeah, comes so up. You have to have some tricks up your sleeve. <laughs> I have a xylophone and a smart top, too. Never, Actually, I do play the piano, too, so I'm... It's awesome. never lost you a yeah, booking, oh, wow. your xylophone work. Well, thanks. I, yeah, maybe, I should, uh, maybe I should book... Yeah, some, play the tiny maybe. piano? Tiny it, piano. Oh, there's a tiny oh, piano right is, there. Oh, yeah. there's a tiny piano. Isn't that cheating, though, if you already know how to play the piano? You know what I mean? No, yeah. that's a little more of a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally cheating. It's cheating. Yeah. Do it. Allowed. Do it. it now, how long have you played the guitar, Chris? Since I was about 19. Wow. I started on the banjo. Wow, you started? Wait, that's insane. Yeah. Do, no do one starts the banjo? I do play the banjo. No one starts yeah. the banjo. Do you play, who plays the guitar? I, I know like Here, three chords on the guitar. You play this, and I'll play the banjo. Oh, my God. Yeah. I seriously know like three chords. If That's all I know. If they match up with the same three I know on the banjo, then, we can <laughs> then we'll have a jug band. My dad has always wanted to play the banjo. He loves Dixieland, but he owned a bar, so it never happened, and he had seven kids, so he's too exhausted. But <laughs> What three chords do you know? Oh, like G, C, A. That's the ones. G's Those are the ones. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Play me something like uh, a good country chord progression if you if you think if you can. Stop playing. I know, it just <laughs> oh keeps no. going. Country song won't ever stop. It just keeps on going and going. Well, I guess we'll stop playing once I learn how to read. <laughs> Country song. That was really disrespectful. <laughs> country song. Country song. What country? makes me want to go on a road trip with you guys. Right? I know, it never gets old, yeah. It's like and desert we'll buy passing. some Doritos and keep going. And a bag of weed. <laughs> that song was called nice. Doritos and a bag of weed. Yeah. <laughs> good job, Scott Robinson. Hey, oh, good job, was, Scott, was, Scott was, Robinson. Nobody ever lets me play their banjo. guitar, so oh, thank you, Liz. Thank awesome. you very much. Awesome, you need to play all the time. I, I'm a big banjo fan. For, uh, do you like Sufjan Stevens? Yes. Yeah, it's like simple banjo that stuff, man. It's Ooh, just yeah, banjo gorgeous. is, oh my God, so beautiful. Good. Yeah, I had insomnia in college, and uh, I didn't smoke weed, 
And so I, uh, not, not yet. And so I picked up a banjo. The banjo was your weed? And then your roommate had insomnia. I, I, I lived alone. My neighbors, though, I think were on drugs, and I think they were up all night on drugs. Just probably like paranoid that some banjo plays. You guys hear banjo? I hear banjo, and I think she's a cop. <laughs> they always give me weird looks. But yeah, so I started playing the... Banjo, the, the instrument <laughs> of law enforcement. Well, it is a little deliverance, is all I'm saying. Right. So there's some bad connotations with the, you know, piggy piggy. Y'all got any sugar? <laughs> but after the banjo, guitar came pretty easy. Ooh. What's that, Roxy the Fox? Somebody is asking for Sean's beatbox lesson. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Mom? So we have... You uh, should be at work. We have a few... Uh, games on the show and one of them is where Sean Fisher's been teaching our guests um, how to rap <laughs> and do more hip hoppy things wow. and I and oh give it away it's great <laughs> Most qualified person in the room, at the very least. <laughs> right, we can't have a we can't have a segment without a bumper. <laughs> Learning stuff about hip hop, teach us something, Sean. Learning stuff about hip hop, teach us something, Sean. So, hi guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Very clappy out today. Um, so yeah, I was thinking that because uh, beatboxing does have sort of like its origin story, it can be traced back to like jazz and scatting. Uh, I thought that I would sort of like make it more scat based because that feels more lounge uh, sure. centric than uh, beatboxing and hip hop does. Uh, so essentially, um, turning your voice into an instrument, a lot of that comes down to the pressure is you want to sound like uh, uh, instrument all the time or it's like it's not going to be good if you aren't like is that a drum or a person um but so much more is is uh the more important part is definitely the rhythm right and and maintaining sort of like a melody and thinking of it in those terms uh so with that being said a lot of like uh things that i'll do to kind of like uh, do a lot of sounds at once are sort of compacted consonants uh and i have a couple little quick phrases that i use all the time if i'm looking to uh uh, just add a flair to a beat or add a like add a little like a uh, vocal melody and uh, a couple of those that I want to introduce today uh, the first one is biggity right so biggity. you can say biggity and if you focus on just the consonant sounds it becomes more instrumental right so if I'm just going like biggity 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 turning it into biggity, 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 biggity. so if I'm doing a beat and I'm going So it makes it sound like I'm doing way more interesting things than boots I'm doing. Boots and cats and boots, biggity, 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 boots and cats yes. and biggity, 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 <laughs> boots and cats and slow it even down for the boots and cats, biggity, biggity, biggity. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the other one is Topeka. Topeka is another one. So Topeka, Topeka, Been Topeka, 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 Topeka. Yeah, I don't know why when you do it, it sounds so different. You make me feel as good as Mitchell Trachtenberg did. You can do it. Good for you. Good for you. Uh, yeah. So how do we use how how would how would we so. as n- <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll just lay down like a simple sort of like bluesy kind of beat underneath it. Simple for you. Sim- it's just like a nice simplified bluesy beat, and then you guys just scat over it more than anything else. We have a suggestion from Roxy the Fox. Go go for it, Roxy. Goats. They want the song about Billy Goat. So we need to make. A rap like, with scats. I'd say like a bluesy kind of bluesy song kinda. rap about yeah about goats. goats. And then when you have no goat lyrics, you just switch on over to the scatting and the biggity to biggity to peekas. Cool. <laughs> Today, we're supposed to rap about goats. To peek a piggity, to peek a piggity about goats. 
When they asked me, do you know anything about goats? I said, totes. <laughs> I know goats are called Billy. And goats can be silly. And when goats get pregnant, they have kids. Topeka. Biggity, biggity, biggity. Goats are delicious if you eat them. Zippity bow, topeka, biggity, zippity, dab, dippity, dab. But I think it's still illegal. If you beat them. Suggestion? Wow. <laughs> or was that the This is a very popular dinner bell. bell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hit that, I hit that bell when I wanted Thank you. I learned a lot about ghosts fun. just now. You milk one very carefully. <laughs> I was expecting ghosts. But we got goats. We yeah, got goats. I know. With the Halloween theme, you'd think it would maybe it's a maybe it's a dead ghost. Someone's like oh, autocorrect, like I, say, I know, that's what I <laughs> uh, ah, I wanted a ghost song. That's right. <laughs> hey ghost. Roxy, what was the second bell for? Oh, oh, Just knocked oh. it over. Oh. <laughs> 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 the, the goat kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> and then ate it. Oh, because they'll well, eat anything. They'll eat any, that's what I've heard. Right. I've only, I only know that from sitcoms from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh, goats yeah. eat tin cans. It's true, yeah. <laughs> or like Granny Clampett's bag of money. You know, something stupid <laughs> like that, you know, from Beverly Hills. Yeah. She was always leaving her money around. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Granny. Clearly marked dollar sign bags. <laughs> goats know what they Legitimate. want. Legitimate, that's right. Mr. Drysdale only took the money <laughs> bags <laughs> marked. You gotta take those clams or bags of money this week. <laughs> Security is the number one reason you want to bank with us. <laughs> We're very discreet. <laughs> we only put one dollar sign on the outside of the bag. Right. You don't know. <laughs> no one knows. So What's awesome. your uh, guilty pleasure TV show now? That is it still the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> and Hee Haw? Actually, I Love Lucy is my guilty pleasure. Aw. Got a thing for Just redheads? I can't, I, I can't watch <laughs> morning news anymore. I can't watch it. I can't. So I will watch yeah. I Love Lucy instead. That keeps me from uh, turning the channel. That's what it is. Scott? Yeah, it just says. Uh, my, my guilty pleasure would have to be uh, Ancient Aliens. <gasps> wow. I'm, I'm so adding good. to the fake news narrative yes. uh, by 
desensitizing myself to it. Planet Nibiru and the Anunnaki and all That's that. right. Thank you, Giorgio. You're welcome. <laughs> they start you speaking see? each other's language. This is such a geek moment. I'm not sure. I was like, back going. to that's a smart top again. Yeah, <laughs> where'd you get yes, that smart yes. top? Giorgio Sucolos. See, is I love girl. Lucy is about a redhead in love with a Cuban <laughs> guy. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ancient Aliens is about this lovable guy, Giorgio Sucolos. Yeah. And his wacky adventures. Everything that's ever happened in human civilization is is about aliens. Wow. Yeah, well, that's true. Probably, yeah. So much Have we history. said nerd alert yet on the show? Yes. Uh, we, or we did Dorchestra at the top. Dorchestra. Yeah. yeah. That's an excellent orchestration, Scott Robinson. Thank you. <laughs> I have a degree in orchestration. Oh, I, 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 clearly, clearly. I'm impressed. I, yes. but yeah. why, why? So you're just fascinated by aliens? It's, in, in the uh, life. it's on during the afternoons during the week. Okay. okay. And I don't so get the, that I don't, or I don't get the old uh, TV Judy. show station like you do. What I don't know what TV you station. It's just on a uh, Hallmark Channel, I think. In well, the Hallmark. Yes, yeah. you, there's another station you always refer to, and I'm like, I don't get it. Hallmark it's all old yes. stuff. Like I love Hallmark Lucy. Channel. The Lucy Contest show. Lines go to die. Um, <laughs> um, you could that's where you got those mystery shows. What my mom calls the Who Done It. Actually, I'm I'm in a uh, one uh, uh, Hallmark Christmas movie with um, with Melissa. Yeah, it's coming up. It's coming up again. It's a classic now. It's shot at four o'clock in the morning. So set your alarms, everybody. It'll be on every day. What is it called? It's called the Christmas Pageant, and I play Beverly Simmons. What is it? You and pageants, vagina, I Christmas. Know, right? Yeah. See? <laughs> right. And it's and I my character may or may not have cancer. I don't want to but anyway, it's a happy ending though, so you figure it out. Um, <laughs> she does. Guess what? <laughs> she was insufferable the <laughs> entire She's time. Let her like, know, that bitch has <laughs> cancer. <laughs> Christmas is safe. <laughs> my <last> wish <laughs> came true. <laughs> Next Christmas will be so much better without her. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Right, the well, pageantry is her just being like, I have cancer. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> I don't want to wear that sweater. I have cancer this <laughs> year. Christmas is about me. <laughs> Aww. What are you going to take us out on, guys? What's, What's uh, uh, This is a song we only know half. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's uh, we're not a high-tech show here. Okay. You don't have to know the whole thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, but we, we literally, we only know half. All right? Okay. We'll send it earlier. Have <laughs> fun. Lock inside you and die in your heart next to mine. Softly you whisper, so dear. How could our love be so blind? Sail all together, together. drift in a heart and here you are by mine. Side. So now. You with oh, arms not to I believe what I say here am Oh, arms hoping you want me to me. open arms Thank you so much <laughs> With the lampshades, thank you so much We only know half That's the lampshades right there Come see them at Flappers November 26th You can see them November the 7th the November 26th will be their Christmas show November 7th will be the lampshades being the lampshades our, yes, our non-Christmas. Um, <laughs> the non-Christmas promote it as the non-Christmas show. The non-Christmas. Yeah. Anti-Christmas. Yes. The anti-Christmas yes, yes, show yes, yes. when that bitch gets cancer. <laughs> the happy holidays <laughs> show. <laughs> and if you want to find us each week, uh, Facebook, we're at Songs in the Key of Funny. Twitter, at Songs Key of Funny. Instagram, just just go to our website, Songs in the Key of Funny. Um, and each week, come back and watch us live at 2 p.m. on the Flappers YouTube channel. And you can uh, you can watch us do this whole thing live Aww. streaming. Or you please subscribe to our uh, iTunes um, podcast. And that way you can hear us each week. And thank you for, for listening. Once again, I'm Kristen Key, and you've been listening to... Songs in the Key of Funny. Funny songs and the stories behind them. With John Fisher. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> With John Fisher. Remember that I forgot you at the end. That's all right. You didn't forget me at the end. You remembered me at the I end. Did. You forgot yes. me throughout the rest of it. <laughs>